Welcome, friends. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you today? I'm so glad to be here and so glad that you're there. I think you will be uh, very blessed by this program and when you meet my guests and all that. Um, so if you're brand new, you know, if you've been channel surfing and all, and you stopped, my name is Arthelene Rippey. Kind of an odd name, Arthelene, but my dad's name was Arthur. That's where it came from. And I'd like to know your name, so maybe you could get in touch with us, you know. It's always good to know who we're commu uh, communicating with. And the program's Home Keepers, and we try to deal with anything that can affect the home. And what would our lives be without RNs, nurses? I have a niece who is an RN, and my children have quite major medical histories. My son's had a kidney transplant. Both of them have had cancer. And I'm kind of familiar with hospitals and hospital personnel. And I can tell, I can tell that nurse that has a calling on her life and the one that is just a job. I can spot it very quickly. And I'm telling you, most of them are so dedicated and really appreciate them. And that's the kind of nurse we have today. Her name is Vicki. Augustiniak, and she wrote this book called Really God, Bangladesh, and I'm telling you, when I saw that title, I was just drawn to it because she is a nurse who comes home and works for a while in a hospital, and then she goes all over the world, and she's been to Bangladesh uh, several times, and I'm thankful she kept a diary because this is uh, this book, she probably didn't have to sit and try to bring up memories because she wrote them down. I want you to hear about a wonderful, wonderful ministry. I'm going to join Stephanie. You ready for this? We're making lemon blueberry biscuits. Need I say more? I think not. Before I join her, though, I want to one more time offer you this book, Personalities in Love. Uh, I'd like for people to read more than they do, turn off the TV. You know what I'm saying? I saw something on the, t on the um, Internet the other day that said we used to teach Greek and Hebrew, but now uh, we have remedial reading in college. That's terrible. This book can help you understand people. I promise you it will. It deals with the four basic personalities that each of us are born with one or a combination of a couple. And it's yours for that gift of at least $15 to the program. You can use the 800 number, of course. A lot of people are used to shopping that way, 1-800-229-0059. Or the address is Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And um, we'll be glad to get it right out to you. We've got them ready to go. Hello there, sister. Hi, how are you? Yeah, last time I'm here, you had just got back from going to see your dad mm -hmm. on his birthday. That's a good daughter. She yeah. drove 10 hours one way yep. to um, tell her daddy happy birthday. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time your siblings have been together in in a long time, mm -hmm. in a long time. I have a picture to show you. You want to yeah, see? Yeah, I like. Don't you okay. like Stephanie's pictures? Yeah. yeah. There we so, go. So okay. okay, so that's one My good sister's group. the blonde mm -hmm. on the end. Then my older brother Billy. My I could dad. tell she wasn't the father, the uh, brother. Yes. Yeah. My dad's in the middle. Then me, and then my younger brother couldn't make it to the party, mm -hmm. so we photoshopped him in. He's in blue. <laughs> We've done that before, and it looks good. That's a good-looking group. Yeah, so yeah. there, my dad was 70, turned 75, so we were all celebrating. Well, that's a milestone. That's a good one to celebrate. Yes, yes. All right, what do we do? Because I know all I'm doing is making a glaze. You're making a glaze with powdered sugar, uh, lemon juice, and lemon zest, and then you're going to spray the pan. Mm -hmm. And I have flour, I have sugar, I have baking powder, baking soda, and salt that I'm going to get all mixed together. Well, we often speak of the wonderful aroma in this mm, studio, it but smells, it's exceptional yeah. today. I walked in today and I was it like, okay, is that exceptional. delicious. Mm -hmm. And we've made muffins like this before, but we've never made biscuits. We've never mm -hmm. made lemon blueberry biscuits. So we're just going to whisk up the dry ingredients real quick. Just get them all incorporated. I think I've mentioned this before, but my husband's grandmother had either 13 or 15 children. I, oh. I'm not sure. She made two of these every morning. Yep. Full of homemade biscuits. Mm -hmm. She just puts her fingers in. Mm -hmm. You can no more get a recipe out of her probably than uh, yes. uh, she just knew. They, they never measured. So I have um, some yogurt, lemon yogurt. That's really going to add a nice lemony mm -hmm. flavor. And I would think some moisture. And moisture. And I have some melted butter. 
And I have an egg that I'm gonna get mixed up in here real quick. Do biscuits usually have eggs? Um, oh yeah. sure. Do they? Sure. I've never made one, to be honest with you. And then I'm gonna um, incorporate some lemon zest. Oh. Mm. Oh, I love that well, smell. You know, my motto here is anything lemon. Yes. Anything lemon. And then this is an extremely, extremely dry batter. So just know that. So you're gonna mix it all together. We're gonna fold in the blueberries. Look how beautiful those are. It, that's just crazy. Yes, and these are really hot. Right out of the oven. Yes. Look at, oh. Calm yourself, girl. I can't even stand how nice they look. Mm -hmm. We'll just put this on a, we'll yes. put on one, we'll share uh -huh. it. Yeah, because I'm gonna have to take one up for my boss, you know. So put one on, put it on two. Okay. <laughs> So what I did ear earlier when I made these, you know, I just, I had to get in there and, um, because it's such a dry batter. So I just used my fingers a little bit. And then we incorporate the blueberries in gently. And then you just, uh, it says a third of a cup. You should get a dozen. I got 11, but. Well, 11 yeah, what? Biscuits. Oh, okay. Yeah, you should get a dozen, but I might. They're I must good have size? Made them. Yeah. Mm. That's so delicious. That smells so, mm -hmm. so good. I'm messy now. So. Talk because I'm my mouth's full. Okay, well, I'll tell you. We went on vacation, you know. I went on vacation, and the whole weekend was around food. So oh, now yeah. I'm trying to really um, watch what I'm eating because yeah. everything, like well, everything we did. You have been told, time for feasting and time for fasting. Well, we feasted like kings, let me tell you. And it was so nice because Monica, our station manager from mm -hmm. Nashville, came because we were so close, and she brought me White Castles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got people here, and there, there are no White Castles around where we live. No, and you either love them or hate them. Mm -hmm. you, there's no in between. I don't think I have any desire for them. But maybe if oh, I taste one. Oh, we love them. So my dad and I just... Well, weren't they kind of dry when you got them? And no, she had cold? put them in the trunk and put a coat over them <laughs> to kind of insulate them. So they were good. So anyway, then you don't roll that out or anything. You nope. just drop it. You like just drop it. Yep. Incorporate the fold in the um, blueberries gently and then just a third mm -hmm. of a cup each and you plop it on there. Wonderful. No rolling. No. What, what a treat. What a nice addition to any meal. Mm. So if you would like to have this recipe, we'll be glad to get it out to you. Information is coming on the screen, and the best way is to email it, really. Uh, but we'll send them out if you write to us. There's no charge. And I want you to stay and meet Vicki. You're going to love her story. I promise you. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen. Or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. I am so uh, very happy to introduce to you Vicki Vicky Augustiniak uh, from Michigan, right? Detroit, Michigan. Beautiful state. I've yes. been there many times. Just, of course, I've always wanted to go to Mac. Is it Mackinac or Mackinac? Mackinac Island. Island. I've always wanted to go there. That's, have you been there? It's right above the... Oh, yes, many times. I do want to go then, don't I? Yes, yes. Beautiful. Very, very, very beautiful. beautiful. Uh, your book, your, uh, the book title just grabbed me as soon as I saw it because... It gave a message, you know, God, if you're going to send me somewhere, um, Bangladesh probably wasn't my first choice. Is that true? That's, that's actually true. Okay. I, uh, I always thought God would take me to Africa first mm -hmm. and uh, never saw Bangladesh. I didn't even know where Bangladesh was at the time. You know now, don't you? I do know now. <laughs> yes. uh, your book recounts uh, a, a difficult childhood and some um, poor parents divorced and all that. Um, you were the oldest of nine children, which kind of, uh, I think, put extra burdens on you. Do you, do you feel that way? Um, you, uh, responsible. Yeah. I was the responsible one. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you think that affected what you have finally become? Um, I wanted to take care of people, you know, 
and uh, wanted to give back to people too. We, I was raised in a Christian home, even mm -hmm. though there was some uh, abuse and stuff. God was a part of my mom's life and my dad's too. Was it your first first communion? Was it the first one where you said you really felt a presence yes. of God? Yes. How old were you? Um, I would have been seven. Um, I was sick just before I made that communion. I was in the hospital as a child and thought I was going to die. I don't. I didn't know how I got there. So that first encounter with God was like, you know, in particular Jesus, you know, I just gave my heart to him at that time. That's just, that's just such an astounding story that just proves the reality of the Lord, of the Holy Spirit, that a seven-year-old child with a lot of trouble in your life, really, mm -hmm. um, Jesus walks in and, and you know it, and he's been with you ever since. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, was it uh, difficult for you to get your RN degree? Um, yes, it was. Um, because of the tr trauma in the house, uh, um, I had a lot of lack of confidence in myself. Um, I found, um, it, you know, um, just, just unsettled. As a matter yeah. of fact, um, I saw a counselor during nursing school because um, I was having trouble getting leaving my family and what was going on with them and concentrating on school because there were probably things going on that you felt well maybe I could help you yes. know, you had this yes. responsible right uh, born with it I guess but uh, the Lord used it later on you know in all this missionary work my my mother was the youngest of nine and I was the oldest of she was the youngest of eight sorry and I was the oldest of nine and so her personality was much different than my personality. She was the baby. She was the baby, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm glad you put all that in there because it really lays the foundation to me of, of how the Lord, he takes broken things, he takes broken pieces, and boy, he He could do a lot with them. He can use. Uh, and you got, you got married, you went through engaged encounter and marriage encounter both. Um, if you hadn't gone through the engaged encounter, I've heard a marriage encounter, but not the other one. But I, I suppose they're We were brothers. blessed, my husband and I. Um, Detroit um, was the first place that an engaged program of like this went on from marriage encounter. And the couple that ended up being our spiritual parents ended up um, starting this. They, they felt that um, for it was nice to, for marriage, they were married 15 years, but they would have liked to have that foundation when they were first getting married. And so we were very blessed to have I know, that. I know when my daughter was um, engaged, I really, really encouraged them to go to, a, well, the premarital counseling, mm -hmm. what we call it, and, and they did. You know, uh, Do you feel that that laid a foundation oh, yeah. for your marriage to, to last? Yes. Because you know, you, these broken people getting married and getting together, um, only God can really probably forge that union, and you're still married, right? <laughs> yes, I'm, uh, we celebrated our 40th year anniversary Congratulations. Uh, in November. Congratulations, yeah. So. And uh, he's gone with you yes. on the mission field. As a matter of fact, when I was uh, made the decision to write the book, I debated and I said, Rick, you've got to write a chapter in your words. And so the last chapter is his thoughts on being with Ash. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great. All right. Um, you went through your church, right? And uh, your was your first missionary trip to Bangladesh? Yes. So I imagine that was a culture shock that. Um, not only was it a culture shock, um, I went and asked a Korean doctor that I worked with. Um, to take me and he agreed so I went with Korean people to a Korean compound and so not only did I have the culture shock of being with Ash but I was also with the and they speak Korean uh, some of them speak broken English and so I had that element going too of you not knowing the, their language and not knowing Beng Bengali and so did you learn how to speak any Korean no, I, I know, come something down, that's it, and that's... <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that means, like, uh, it's a greeting. It's okay. a greeting, like, uh, how are you, or something like that. 
when you get there, the need is so great, and here this little team, is it, is it just overwhelming? Do you feel like you're just trying to empty the Pacific with a t tablespoon or something? The first trip was probably the most difficult for me. Um, it was a total culture shock, and I physically did not feel very good that trip. And so, yeah, it was, it was um, I remember one of the days, and this was a hard day for me, uh, we were gonna go out in one of the rickshaws, and I went out, but I couldn't make the trip, and I went back to um, the place that we were sleeping, and I just cried like crazy, mainly because one of the workers, his wife was going to come, and we had a hand surgeon with us that time, and his wife was going to come in and have her hand fixed by the hand surgeon, and um, uh, she, he couldn't make it. She couldn't get there because of the travel to, to get there. And so um, I remember crying because we were leaving the next day and we were not going to help her. And so, yes, the need is very overwhelming. Yeah. Um, I marked something in your book. I think this was the first trip. And she kept a diary, and boy, what, what a gold mine if you're going to write a book. <laughs> you, you kept a, a really good diary, very well written. Uh, you write, I'm so tired, I was up early and worked hard. What a day. We did nine cases, two modified hysterectomies, and several tumor uh, removals. What confusion. Isn't that an awful lot to do in one day? Um, yes. Would it, be, it should be here, wouldn't it? You know, for the same people, yeah. same people doing yeah. everything. And you talk about the children with the cleft lips. You know, mm -hmm. we see we see pictures of that. You know, in um, in magazines. You know, uh, to give and encourage people, give to missions. Why are there so many in that part of the world? Do you think? I, you know, I don't know. Uh -huh. That's that's, that's the why answer. I've been curious about that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. And that's uh, that was the trip in the Philippines. That was right. That was my trip in the Philippines. I I can only imagine the Thanksgiving coming from those mothers when you can fix a child who's so really horribly deformed. One of the pictures I chose to put in the book was of a mother mm -hmm. whose um, a child was repaired and her, the look of how thankful she was and how happy she was to have seen that. Mm -hmm. Because um, Mothers are mothers, no, no matter uh, no matter where they are throughout the world. Um, you have been Bangladesh, Philippines, uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. anywhere else? No, not yet. Well, that's enough. <laughs> <coughs> not yet. What, what is what is uh, how do you plan these things? Uh, you go for a certain amount of time, and then mm -hmm. you come home and and you work in a, an American hospital. Mm -hmm. um, how long are these trips? Usually about 10 days. They're short-term missions. They're mm -hmm. done by a sponsoring church. When I go to Bangladesh, it's a sponsoring church is the Korean Methodist Church. When I've gone to the Philippines, it is um, Filipino Medical Association of Michigan. Again, a doctor I work with got me, con had, mm -hmm. I got contact through her. And uh, South Africa was a doctor that I'd gone to Bangladesh asked me if I would go to South Africa with a non-denominational church, Kensington Church um, in Detroit, which actually has branches down in, in uh, Florida. Sounds like the whole body of Christ getting together. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned to you earlier, I said, I think that makes Jesus real happy when, yeah. when his people get together. Um, which, part, which part of the world is the worst is it when it comes to the medical needs of the people? Probably what we see in Bangladesh my, uh, would be my take. Um, not even just the medical, but the spiritual needs of the people, too. Um, I find uh, the areas that we go in Bangladesh are the remote areas of the country. Probably when you hear about the floods in Bangladesh, that's the areas that we're going in when the monsoons come. And uh, there is not doctors there. Uh, when we, and um, I put this in my book, when we were um, on our third, my third trip there, we were um, in a car accident on the way out of the country. And uh, when that happened, we went to a hospital. One of our nurses was hurt, a fractured hip, 
and needed You were it. injured also, weren't you? I had soft tissue injury to my mm -hmm. ankle, mm -hmm. but I minimized that because she, um, she was So what, what would it be like to be a patient in a hospital there? When we first, we were about two hours outside of the closest hospital, so we did um, uh, go from one van to, t I mean from two vans to one van, and uh, we all got together and we had to take our luggage too, um, and she had to be laid flat, mm -hmm. and it was about a two hour trip to the hospital. All the time um, she was moaning, we were holding her hip, and oh, all we had was a bottle of Motrin between all of us. What a, what a bummer, you're going over there, you know, to help and help heal the people and then you get hit yourself. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to uh, Vicki Augustiniak and she's written the book, Really God, Bangladesh. She's a missionary nurse who's made several uh, trips overseas. And uh, Vicki, I'm a pastor's kid and I remember so well when the missionaries would come and tell their story and they'd bring their little artifacts and things. And always, uh, I think I always had a heart for missions. Uh, but I think medical missions is such an open door. Um, perhaps you can walk through those doors where maybe just a minister couldn't uh, into some of these countries. Now, you've been to Bangladesh how many times? Five times. And Five I, times. I was scheduled to go to Bangladesh this January. Um, we were not able to go because um, it was, um, they had their elections and there was rioting going on in Bangladesh. So we were like 10 days away from going on our trip. We had to cancel. We have postponed, I, I shouldn't say cancel, we keep saying we're not canceling that trip. We have postponed the trip to October. And so, as of right now, October 29th, we'll so be when going they, So when they have an election, they have riots to go along with it? Um, they have been, <laughs> yes. They have been. Uh, that's, uh, that's really too bad. Since you've been there that many times, how has India changed? Because I read information that um, it's got more capitalism. It's rising out of the extreme poverty. Uh, that it has had in the past. Have you noticed that? I have noticed in Bangladesh some changes. The first trip that I made, there was not even a street light in Bangladesh. And um, there was more squatter that we saw on the streets and stuff. The last trip that I made, um, there was improvement. I could see some modernization of the country, which I was very pleased to see. Is there any poverty here to compare with what you saw there? I don't think there is. Uh -huh. People here in this country have told me over and over again, well, why don't you do stuff here? People need stuff here. Um, they have toilets here. You know, we have uh, an abundance of things that we don't even uh, appreciate and we crab about it. Yeah. It's not like that there. What about running water? Um, they have well water. Most of them, not most of them, don't do not have running water. And in the area that we go, because it floods, they're nomads. So they will build their little tent, or they have their little boat, and then they ch go to and from different areas when the weather gets worse, because there's no there's n so it's, there's no homes for them. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like spiritually when you're there? I know that you've written about morning devotions and mm -hmm. singing and is there a presence there that's just a little bit more um, in tune maybe than We have here? to be very careful in Bangladesh, okay? This is not, a, uh, it's a Muslim country mm -hmm. and they do not want us openly proselytizing. proselytizing. Yeah. So we in the compound, I call it a compound, but in the area that we're at, we're able to you know, have our own lone devotions and we're able to, and so that's a really bonding thing mm -hmm. for all of us that go together. Mm -hmm. You know, we, and it helps when we see things that are very troubling outside. Yeah, now, um, how many trips has your husband gone on? Three trips. And what does he do? He's, he's, he's a not a medical he's person. He's a computer programmer. And so he has helped to, um, um, 
get them online and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, just before I came, um, he was telling me that one of the young men that he actually was working with in Bangladesh, he saw him on Facebook the other day. So small world, huh? small world, yes, yeah, small world. So that's a way of them, you know, getting to the modern, to be modernized, to be, you know, it, it's not just medical mission. The, um, they have a school and uh, a farm community mm -hmm. and stuff. They're trying to help the people. How has this uh, this whole thing changed your life? <laughs> it's changed my life in ways beyond uh, that I can explain. Uh, I am profoundly blessed. Um, I feel more grounded spiritually than I've ever mm -hmm. felt. Um, the first trip in Bangladesh, um, when I was looking at everything, I really wrestled with you know, God, are you there or not? And yeah. Why this poverty and, yeah. and all of that stuff? And I remember coming to terms with that and recommitting my life to Jesus again on that trip. I, I still don't believe that. And uh, so I'm willing to do whatever he wants me to do. And right we don't now. have all the answers, do we? No, we but don't we have will all someday. the answers. Thank you so much. I'm telling you, I love to bring people like Vicki to the viewers. Uh, because it just gives you just a little more of an expanded view of the kingdom of God and how we need to pray constantly for these who go. Uh, it's not the safest thing you can do is to go around the country, uh, especially as unstable as it is right now. So um, if you don't remember her last name, it's a little rough. Uh, just remember Vicki and pray for Vicki as she goes and uh, pray you just represent me while you're there. I just really have a burden for what you do and all. Let me remind you one more time that uh, we have this book, Personalities in Love, by Donna Parto, and I'm telling you, it's a, it's a good read. It's very, very educational. Teach you a lot about people's temperaments and personalities and help you understand each other. The Bible says, good understanding giveth favor. And so try to understand those in your household. And I hope that you will join us next time because we are doing our best to really bring you those things that can enrich your life and help you along your way. And I hope that we will hear from you. And until next time, remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.